what if you can have a phone where you could swap your camera for a better one or you can replace its GPU chip for better graphics and performance. This is exactly what Intel is trying to achieve with its 14 Gen Meteor Lake CPUs. While we are used to these types of processors, which typically do a variety of arithmetic and logical operations, they still need several other chips to execute these tasks. This is where we have SOC, which gives an upper hand on CPUs without taking much of your space. In simple words, an SOC is known as system on a chip. This chip has several different components on a single silicon chip that contains a CPU, GPU, memory, USB controller and many more. This is why our mobile phones are smaller and yet they can work as good as computers. Our computers have different components for each task, but this makes them bigger and power hungrier. However, with the adaption of SOCs in the electronic market, Intel is soon going to change its way to make the processors. In a recent event known as Vision Conference that was held in Texas, Intel showed off its actual 14 Gen Meteor Lake processors for the first time. While Intel already gave us an idea on how they will be designing their Meteor Lake chips previously, this is the first time we have seen these chips in real life. According to the data shared by Intel, the 14 Gen Meteor Lake CPUs are going to use multiple dies in its processors. Here each die will serve a different purpose and there will be a total of three different nodes used. The first one will be the Intel 4 for compute die which was initially known as 7 nanometer process node. The second will be TSMC's N3 node for graphics die and TSMC's N4 or N5 node for SOC die. The architectures used will be Redwood and Crestwood Cove and the processors will be using Intel's XC HPG architecture with up to 192 execution units. So if you take a look at this processor, you will find that there are 4 different tiles or dies used on a single chip. If we correspond to this presentation, the first tile is for the GFX or you can call it as graphics die. It's the smallest of all and next to it is the CPU tile. In the middle we have the SOC and IO tile at the bottom. The reason for having a completely new design for the next gen processors is to have flexibility to give more power to the processors. Even though we have CPUs and APUs with iGPUs inbuilt, they are still not powerful enough to fulfill the demands of gamers and those who need extra graphics power for 3D rendering or video production. This chiplet design will give Intel the power to replace any particular tile with a more powerful one if they need to increase its CPU or GPU performance. Of course, these chips will have increased power consumption, but Intel has confirmed that the standard TDP won't be more than 125 watts. Currently, Intel only shared pics of two different Meteor Lake CPUs that are going to be used in the laptops, but the reports suggest that desktops are also going to get this new CPU upgrade. The two CPUs shared here differ in sizes. The die sizes are almost identical, but their overall sizes differ, which might be an indication to their thermal or power consumption differences. These CPUs are already in the production and Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger has confirmed that the Meteor Lake CPUs are already able to boot Windows and Linux operating systems. Reports say that Intel thinks that they are even ahead of their progress track they initially planned and they have slightly exceeded their own goals. We can expect these chips to be available at the end of 2023 because we are still several months far from the Raptor Lake launch. It's such a shame that Intel is progressing at such a fast speed in their CPU department and yet they are far behind when it comes to the Intel Arc GPUs. The latest reports confirm that Intel is initially going to launch Arc desktop GPUs only in China and that too through system builders and OEMs in the second quarter. They aren't going to launch the desktop cards worldwide before the end of summers and that too with the Arc A3 GPUs missing. Nonetheless, I'm happy that Intel is making great progress with their CPUs as AMD is already doing great with its APUs. Their next gen Phoenix APUs are said to be as powerful as some of today's dedicated graphics cards. Watch this video right here to know exactly how much powerful they are going to be. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you are new here and I will see you next time.